Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and we finally have our very first bank run going on right now with the number 15 bank. The number 15 largest bank in the US right now has just been shut down by regulators and the FDIC has been named the receiver of the bank. So this is a very, very shocking, shocking development, guys. That's what today's video is gonna be about. But also, not only are we gonna talk about basically the collapse, the potential collapse of the banking institutions right now, we're also gonna talk about the labor market and the 10-year treasury because we had some absolutely wild, wild stuff go on today. Now, this situation with Silicon Valley Bank has really exposed the reality of how in trouble every single bank is in right now. And I'm talking big bank guys like Bank of America, Chase. So for me, one of the biggest things here is this is actually exposing how weak and fragile our banking system actually is. So stay tuned for the end of this video. And I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to do personally with my finances now that I'm actually seeing how bad things really are. You guys, I really, really need you to pay attention to what's going on because most people have never seen this happen in their lives. I want to remind you guys that I'm not trying to have anyone panic. FDIC doesn't have enough money to cover very many bank runs. They have less than 2% of the total money that they're insuring. So now that the number 15 bank has just collapsed, my question is, is how much money will FDIC have left afterwards? Think about it, you guys. There's really, really major things happening right now. Now, what's also important is, is this is our first black swan popping its little head up in our economy. So receiving this is allowing us more and more data to really understand what's going on. But remember, you guys, I'm not a financial advisor, even if I want to be, even though my bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in real estate, plus someone that had a repo, bankruptcy, foreclosure, and tax lien back in 2009 because I made the wrong decisions, which will not happen this time around. So if you guys can, please, for my new objective, which is not to lose all my money, please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. But one thing I want to do right now, guys, is I'm going to jump into a video and we're going to take a listen on what is happening exactly at Silicon Valley Bank. Take a listen. David Faber, of course, off today, but as is common, David, calling in with yeah. news, especially with the story we're watching today. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's a typical day off. We're going to get news. Um, <laughs> we're obviously keeping a close eye. I know you guys are on Silicon Valley Bank. Um, you know, a few things to share here at this point. Uh, as the market already seems to be well aware, though, I don't believe the company has formally announced, and that may be why it is a halted news pending, that capital raise that Goldman Sachs had embarked on is a fail. Um, it's not going to happen. Uh, there are plenty of reasons people can point to for why. Um, they certainly didn't seem to time it particularly well in terms of crystallizing a loss uh, and then going out to the market as opposed to actually having the capital raise when they knew they were going to take that loss in that bond portfolio. But beyond that, I can also tell you that separately, the, uh, the bank, Silicon Valley Bank, has hired advisors, not Goldman Sachs, has hired advisors to seek a sale. Um, again, not unexpected, right? You would expect, given the inability to raise capital and the fact that deposits are fleeing this thing, at an incredibly rapid rate, that they then would go to say, okay, can we get sold? Uh, and I am told that there are large financial institutions who've looked at this bank for some time um, who are at least considering taking a look. Does it mean that anything will happen? Absolutely not. In a situation like this, as you guys can well remember from the financial crisis, uh, deposits can move very, very quickly. So by the end of the day, who knows where things stand? But I can tell you that there is an, a, a separate advisor from Goldman that has been brought in, that is taking inquiries, that is reaching out, that large financial institutions, large financial institutions are at least taking a look at Silicon Valley Bank. Because, Jim, as you know, and you were just discussing, I mean, it is a franchise that is somewhat unique in negatives, perhaps in some way, but also in positives. It's connection to high net worth, the VC community. So it is something that a number of banks have looked at in the past. Uh, if you could get in there quickly, uh, stem the, the outflow of deposits, you know, you might actually be able to pick something up of great value. So that's at least what I'm hearing right now. 
Uh, and as we all know, this is a very dynamic situation. As the video pointed out, Silicon Valley failed to get enough capital to stay in business. They're essentially been shut down. I'm going to move on to another article, but I want to kind of explain how this even happened. And essentially what happens, guys, is banks are allowed on their finances to do unrealized losses. Like if the bank has an investment, say in crypto, and they haven't sold that investment yet, but say they're down 60%, they don't necessarily even have to report that loss, you know, because essentially they haven't even sold that investment yet. So essentially, again, guys, what I'm trying to tell you is what this is showing us is, is every single bank, at least everyone that I've reviewed so far is in the same shape. All of these banks have billions and billions of dollars of unrealized losses. This is absolutely shocking to me. And another thing, you guys, so they're trying to sell their company to another financial institution. Here's the, here's why I don't think that's going to work. They're in horrible shape. They, they are down so much money. You guys, it is, it is mind blowing how this happened in what uh, one year of quantitative tightening was it less than a year is where like our one year, you know, one year mark. This is absolutely crazy. You guys. And again, this is the number 15 bank FDIC stepped in when they, you know, when they insure everyone's money that was lost, how much money will FDIC even have? And now that we know now that all the banks are exposed, this is going to happen down the line. This collapse is going to be a domino effect. I don't know if it's going to touch every banking institution, but the thing is, is now we know all of these companies are allowed to take unrealized losses and eventually it can just blow up overnight like we're seeing here. Let me show you another article. Silicon Valley Bank closed by California regulator and FDIC named receiver in the same day. Do y'all, do y'all hear, do y'all, do y'all see how fast this can, you know, here's the thing guys, let me make a point uh, real quick. This is happening in light speed and essentially blinded all of the depositors and customers of that bank. And you guys, I just got back from a four day trip. I just drove 12 hours, slept for maybe two hours. So I know I'm looking like super ruggedy right now, but I woke up after about two hours of sleep. I looked at my phone and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I actually have a video I made for you guys today. I'm not even going to drop it because this right here is that important. And also you guys, I'm sorry, I'm super tired. I know I'm a little bit, you know, I know I'm a little bit rough right now, but again, I just got back from vacation. I just found all this information out and I'm reporting it to you. Let's jump back into this article. The bank was closed by a California regulator. FDIC has been named the receiver and is stepping in in just one day. So let's read a little bit about this. Silicon Valley Bank has been closed by the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. Insane, you guys. And the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, has been appointed receiver, becoming the first FDIC-backed institution to fail this year. This is the first one. This is the start of the fear that we've been waiting for right here. This is how we get in areas that are stubborn, not experiencing price decline. This is how we get it right here. This fear is going to be so powerful. It's, it's going to frighten people to buy. People are not going to know where to put their money. People are not going to want to invest. Mark my words. We'll watch that as we move on in the year. This news comes amid a crisis at parent SVB finance group, S SIVB, which lost a record 60% of its value yesterday after it disclosed large losses from security sales and announced a dilutive stock offering along with a profit warning. The FDIC said all insured depositors will have full access to their accounts no later than Monday morning. So if you were in one of these banks, guess what? You can't even touch your money at the soonest until Monday. Imagine waking up like that, you guys. This is insane. This is out, this is the number 15 bank. This is not, you know, this is not Silvergate or FTX. We're, we're talking about an FDI insured bank that has failed, gone, they're done this year. This is crazy. Uninsured depositors will get a receivership certificate and may be entitled to dividends once the FDIC sells the bank's assets. Are you kidding me? I mean, I mean, how much is that going to be? What, how many pennies on the dollar are you going to get back? This is crazy. The bank had 13 branches in California and Massachusetts, which will reopen on Monday. The bank had about $209 billion in total assets as of December 31st and about $175 billion in deposits. So do me a favor, y'all. Comment below. Let me know how you feel about this. Now, when I first started reporting on bank runs, and I had to learn a lot, you guys. I didn't know 100% about everything and how like the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Form like, Consumer Protection Act worked with bail-ins and things like that. Um, um, but I am certainly educating myself now, and I have to tell you guys, this is this is this is shocking. This is this is a systematic failure. 
um, like we had in 2008. The systematic failure in banking in 2008 was subprime. The systematic failure right now in banking is completely dirty finances, man. I mean, it's just dirty. Uh, they've lost so much money in crypto, so much money in the stock market. I mean, this is absolutely nuts. So, and here's the thing, you guys, what's happening is the Federal Reserve has blunt tools to combat inflation. In order for the Federal Reserve to combat inflation, they have to mess up everything, right? So as a result of messing up everything, it takes a long time for that to finally hit the housing market. And that's why we're seeing a whole bunch of other things fall apart before we really get the housing market under control. Now, here's what I think. Because the, the Federal Reserve has such broad tools, such broad weapons to fight inflation, I believe that what we would need to do is restrict lending guidelines. If we just restrict lending guidelines right now, then we have targeted the housing market directly and we have curved demand without a total economic collapse, which we're seeing now, right? That's just my opinion. I think we target the housing market by, by restricting lending. How do you do that? Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, we're done. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac tightens up their guidelines, drops debt to income ratio from 56.99% with FHA down to maybe 40%. And then conventional, depending on compensating factors, 50% to say 38%. If they do that, we're good. Then we don't have to have all this stuff happens. If we have a total uh, banking financial collapse. This is going to be major, major, major stuff, guys. Let me read one more article for you. And that article is the additional report we got out today on the job market. So even though we're having a financial collapse, systematic failures, the labor market is red hot. So what we have here, guys, I'm going to just say right now, we have stagflation right now going on that will lead us into a deep recession that could possibly lead us into a depression. Because again, do you guys remember me saying that the rich is going to lead this recession? The rich is going to lead this recession. Do y'all, do y'all start to see that happen right now? This is crazy. So the thing is, you know, the federal reserve has to crush people in order for the inflation to be under control. Um, they can't target laser folk. They can't laser focus sniper target inflation. They have to destroy things and they're, they are destroying things effectively. It started with tech. It's now in the you know financial market. It's probably going to hit commercial next. All right. So here's what this article says. Job report. U.S. economy adds 311 jobs in February as labor market stays strong. You guys, this is 100,000 jobs more than expected. So on one hand, we have all of this information, hot job market. I mean, look at payrolls. Unemployment rate did go up slightly, though. So the labor market is strong. It is so strong. Unemployment is so low. This is, this is, this is a really, really amazing, amazing thing that we have happening right now. What I think it could also lead to is the fear that we've been waiting on. I think this is the fear. I think this is where the fear really starts here. And remember this, y'all. You know, And I keep thinking about Jeff's house market. I know you guys are probably sick of me uh, talking about Jeff, but my, uh, a friend of mine and a subscriber, he lives in a housing market that is so tight uh, and it's a highly dense, it's an older market. It's still a little bit of affordable. Uh, so it's really, it was really hard for me to understand like how would a market like that experience a 20%, 25, 30% decline in house value, right? The fear. We have to remember how strong the consumer sentiment is. We have to remember how strong fear is. I mean, do you guys remember the fear of missing out from the buyers and how inflated the house values got as a result of that? So as long as this situation brings enough fear, then I think we're actually in good shape. And we will need to be because let me show you what happened to the 10-year treasury today. Take a look. Absolutely incredible. This is absolutely incredible. The 10-year treasury dropped 21 basis points today. It actually dropped more than that. It's kind of going up and down. But you guys, listen to me. The 10-year treasury dropped 21 basis points today. Even though we have signs of stagflation, even though we had that labor market report come out with over 100,000 more jobs, that 10-year treasury, you guys, has dropped 21 basis points. So when I ask myself, uh, why could that be? Here's the thing. I think the reason that is, is because we're in much, much worse shape than people actually realize. So, you know, even though we have all of this inflation reports, the fact that we already have a system, we already have a bank run and systematic failure beginning is shocking. It's shocking. No one really saw that coming from Silicon Valley. This is absolutely shocking. So in essence, what's happened is the 10-year treasury 
it doesn't have to be that high, right? So right now being at 3.7, we're kind of in the middle of what we know, like if it hits 4%, we know the house market is going to stop. But if it goes down to like 3.3, 3.4, everyone's going to rush back into buy. So right now you guys, it's sitting in the middle. So what's really going to be important for us to kind of pay attention to is how the sediment is, how the fear is moving forward. Will the fear take over the housing market in the next few months? And will that fear now be on the seller side? Only time will tell. But let me tell you guys this. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this freaks me out a little bit, right? This freaks me out. I've never in, in my life have I seen this happen before. I've heard stories about bank runs, FDIC, things of that nature. But this is crazy because we still don't even have unemployment, foreclosure, hyper split. We don't even have all of these other things happening. And yet we already have collapses, consumer credit card, auto loans, uh, banking. And we don't even have the collapse in commercial financing yet. Commercial financing is in worse shape. Commercial financing is the next black swan because remember, a bunch of the commercial financing is going to have to be refinanced this year. And when that, when those loans are refinanced, more than likely the interest rates are going to double or triple. You guys, we are in store for an absolute beating this year, if for, for possibly many years actually moving forward. But what I'm going to do with my money is I've decided to diversify my money into three separate bank accounts. And I'm going to put a roughly 80% of my savings in treasuries. All right. I'm going to buy treasuries. I'm going to be happy with my four or 5%. I'm cool with that. The thing is guys, is I'm going to stop investing. There, there's too much dust in the air. There's too much collapsing. I'm stopping investing. I'm pulling all my money out of fidelity as well. I'm not going to touch the stock market. It's just so unpredictable. It's super scary. So in, again, in order for me to protect myself, that, those are the things I'm going to do with three different bank accounts. 80% of my money is going to go into treasury. I'm pulling out of the stock market fidelity completely. And that's how I'm going to do things, guys. Now, I know I've also looked at, you know, precious metals like gold and silver. I'm just not 100% sold on that yet. You know, we just we really just need to know what is going to happen next. But either way, you guys, you know, understand that, you know, you may want to be playing defense with your money right now. And in fact, I want to get paid more money to keep my money in banks. I, I just don't trust the banks right now because they're using our money and they're failing. When we deposit money into a bank, they take our money and they invest it in things. And the things that they're investing it in right now is causing them to go out of business and steal and take all of our money. And that's just it's not worth it for me. All right. I'm not trying to create panic. I'm just saying be defensive. Now, other than that, guys, I really hope you guys got some value, insights, and perspective in today's video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck and I hope you win.